Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 10th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Amsterdam, Netherlands. And just when you think there isn't really much new to talk about when it comes to crypto coin mining, Xavier came across some interesting malware that ran crypto coin mining in a browser in headless mode. Headless mode refers to running a browser without GUI. Now, typically that's done in order to provide access to the browser from scripts. In this case, the script, of course, is malicious and is then used to load JavaScript into Chrome, which here is run without its GUI. So the user doesn't even know that Chrome is running at all. A second interesting trick, but uh, by far from new, uh, that the malware is using is to actually use Rec Server 32 in order to launch the malicious code. This way it does bypass most whitelisting techniques. And of course, the difference between using a tool like, for example, wget curl or bits admin instead of running the full browser in headless mode is that the browser does parse JavaScript, while these other command line tools usually just retrieve the code but don't run it. And also running JavaScript in a browser is less likely to trigger any anti-malware or whitelisting systems. Now for the CoinHive code itself, of course, yes, that particular code has been added to many anti-malware tools. And talking about anti-malware, or in this case, better anti-adware, on Friday, uh, Twitter user Privacy is first noted that anti-adware application Adware Doctor, which is sold in the Apple App Store, has been exfiltrating browser histories and apparently has been doing so for quite a while. Now, the Apple App Store does impose some restrictions for Mac OS and OS X applications by most notably restricting them to a sandbox. So you don't really find a lot of anti-malware, anti-adware applications in the App Store. And if you install one for your Mac, you probably download it outside the App Store. Now, this particular application, probably as a result of this, has been the number one selling paid application in the App Store. The author of the application has been using some tricks in order to bypass some of the restrictions of the App Store, but for the most part to access the browser history, the application just had to ask for permission to read files within the user's home directory. This of course gave the application access to all files in the home directory, but then again for an anti-adware, anti-malware application, you would expect it to need such access. Security researcher Patrick Waddle, after this particular issue was noted, did publish a real great sort of reverse analysis of this application, all the different tricks it uses to stretch the limits of what's possible in the App Store. Now, Patrick notes that this particular application has had a little bit of shady history. The author, while the name is listed within the App Store, appears to be more of a pseudonym and also it appears to be using a number of fake reviews. And talking about security software that may make your system less secure, Proton VPN and NordVPN apparently had approach escalation vulnerabilities in their respective clients. Now, both of these VPNs are based on OpenVPN as are many, many other VPN services that are out there. And VPNs typically need to run as an administrator or as root because they need to reconfigure the system and need to configure network settings. The problem here is that OpenVPN does allow the user to specify plugins and additional executables that are then executed after or before the VPN is established. Now, the user also has the ability to edit the configuration file, which of course then allows normal users to edit a configuration file 
execute the VPN and the VPN as the elevated user will then execute the respective scripts. Initially, these two solutions did implement a fix by not allowing certain configuration directives in the configuration file, but that fix wasn't really implemented completely. They did not really consider that it's also possible to put these configuration directives inside quotes, which then of course can be used to bypass the first too tight filter they implemented. But well, I got one more for you, another security tool that has had issues recently and that's the Keybase browser extension. The Keybase browser extension allows you to send encrypted messages to people and it does so by injecting itself into various websites that you are visit. So you can fill out various forms on the site using encrypted text. Well, the problem here is actually a sort of a common problem in that the extension doesn't protect itself from any potential malicious code running on these sites. So the result being that any site you're using this Keybase tool on has access to Keybase and with that possibly access to other messages that you are writing. Sadly, Keybase appears not to be willing to fix this particular vulnerability so you probably want to uninstall this browser extension if you use it. Well that's it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.